Welcome to the induction program for people who are on committees of management for Crown Land Reserves. This program will give you a general overview of the role of committees of management in looking after Crown Land Reserves and your role as a member of a committee of management. For a comprehensive guide to all aspects of managing a Crown Land Reserve, please refer to the Committees of Management Responsibilities and Good Practice Guidelines available from the Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning website. Hereafter, the Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning will be referred to as the Department. The induction program is in three parts. Part 1 explains the Crown Land Reserve System. Part 2 explains what is expected of committee members. Part 3 covers managing a reserve and where to get help. Part 1. The Crown Land System Crown Land is land that remains in government ownership. For most of the 19th century, the government sold Crown Land to stimulate development and settlement of Victoria. In the latter half of the 19th century, the government recognised that certain lands should be kept in public ownership and it began to reserve Crown Land for public purposes such as parks, schools and hospitals. The department represents the government and therefore represents the landowner of the reserve. Many Crown Land reserves are managed by local councils or Parks Victoria. In addition, more than 1,500 Crown Land reserves are managed by 1,200 local committees of management. Committees of management operate under the Crown Land Reserves Act 1978. The minister or the minister's delegate appoints committees to manage Crown Land reserves for the benefit of the community. Committees of management are appointed by the minister to manage Crown Land reserves for the benefit of the community. The minister appoints local representatives to help make sure that decisions made reflect community needs. The main point of contact for the committee is the local office of the department, which can assist with matters that concern the operation of the committee or the reserve. Some management activities will require the consent of the minister, such as granting of a lease over a reserve. In these cases, the department's head office will assist with obtaining ministerial approval. Crown Land Reserves support a whole range of activities and amenities and play an important part in the recreational, social and cultural life of Victorians. Reserves are used by a range of organisations, including sports clubs and community groups. One committee may have arrangements with a range of users of the reserve. Each reserve has an established purpose. In general, activities allowed on the reserve should be consistent with the purpose of the reserve or other purposes authorised by the Minister. When planning for the future of the reserve, the committee should consider the reserve purpose. Activities on the reserve should be in line with its purpose and be of benefit to the community. Community consultation and involvement with the reserve should always be encouraged. The committee has powers under the Crown Land Reserves Act so that it can oversee the day-to-day -day use and development of the reserve. The committee is authorised to manage, maintain and improve the reserve. The committee can undertake financial transactions. The committee can enter into legal agreements and contracts. It can purchase or sell goods and services. It can negotiate leases and licences with approval from the minister or the minister's delegate. The committee can employ people. The committee can manage the reserve in line with the rules and regulations governing activities and access. Detailed information on the extent of these powers and how the committee should use its powers is in the guidelines. What activities are allowed on the reserve? Activities consistent with the purpose of the reserve and for the benefit of the community or other purposes authorised by the Minister. Part 2. Accountability and Transparency This part of the induction programme looks at your responsibilities as a committee member. Specific roles, such as chair or secretary, have additional responsibilities. As a committee member, your main function 
is to attend and participate in committee meetings. Committee members are expected to attend all meetings unless there are good reasons they cannot. Each committee decides its own meeting times and schedules. Adhering to meeting procedures is important so that all committee members can participate in discussion and decisions made are recorded in the proper way. All members of the committee are expected to act in accordance with the Director's Code of Conduct, issued by the Public Sector Standards Commissioner. Committee members must act with honesty and integrity and be open and transparent in their dealings. It is expected that committee members act fairly and impartially. Committee members should respect other committee members and the members of the public. Committee members should take reasonable care when performing their duties. They must act in a financially responsible manner and act within the powers set out under the Crown Land Reserves Act and other laws that apply to the committee and the reserve. Committee members should also avoid conflict. Conflicts between committee members and conflicts between their personal interests and the best interest of the community they represent. Members have a duty to behave appropriately and to operate as a team. While it is usual for members to hold different opinions, by following committee procedures, members can share their opinions appropriately and make decisions in the best interest of the reserve and the community. A conflict of interest exists where there is a conflict between the committee member's public duty and the committee member's private interest. When this occurs, the individual's private interest could improperly influence their duties as a committee member. A conflict of interest can be real, it currently exists, potential, it may arise if committee members have private interests that could conflict with their duties, perceived, the public could reasonably form the view that a conflict exists or could arise. Having a conflict of interest does not exclude you from being on the committee. Conflicts of interest are easy to manage, providing committee members are honest. Conflicts of interest will arise from time to time, so if you do have a conflict of interest with an agenda item, you must declare it immediately. This should be minuted. In most cases, you should disqualify yourself from discussions and voting on the issue and should leave the room while relevant matters are being discussed. Further information on managing conflicts of interest can be found in the guidelines. Everything the committee does should take place and be recorded in an open and accountable manner to keep community confidence in its management. Committees are required to keep records on activities and decisions, including minutes, annual reports, and volunteer attendance registers. The committee must also keep good records to show its financial transactions. This includes grants or fees received, money spent, contracts and payments. There are other legal requirements covering access to records and retention of records. The Public Records Act, which specifies what records have to be kept and what can be disposed of. The Information Privacy Act, which protects people's personal information. And the Freedom of Information Act, which provides access to records held by committees of management. A comprehensive overview of document management for committees is in the guidelines, along with details of committee procedures. The committee is seeking a contractor to paint the reserve hall. You realise there's a conflict of interest as your son works for a local painting company. Do you A. Advise the chair B. Remove yourself from discussion on the contract C. Abstain from the contractor selection process D. All of the above. D. All of the above. Part 3. Managing the Reserve This part looks at how committees set about managing Crown land reserves. It covers areas of common concern, such as risk and insurance, and explains the department's role in helping committees manage Crown land reserves. Management of a reserve is best undertaken with a management plan. To begin the management plan, committee members need to understand the key values and features of the reserve. A reserve may have a number of different values. It may have recreational value. It may be used by sporting clubs and community groups. It may have environmental values or cultural heritage values. By identifying all the key values of the reserve, 
the committee is able to develop a vision for the future of the reserve, consistent with protecting these key values. The committee management plan should outline the committee's aspirations for the use and development of the reserve. A documented management plan is a good way to communicate to the community the reserve values and the committee's vision. Another part of managing a reserve is managing risks. These may be risks to people accessing the reserve, such as falling trees or tripping hazards. There may also be risks to the successful management of the reserve, such as financial risk. Once a committee has identified risks, it can rate each risk according to the likelihood and consequence of the risk. It can then decide on what actions it will take to address these risks. By keeping a register of identified risks and proposed actions, the committee can follow up and review the risks on a regular basis. Committees are generally protected from most legal claims provided they have acted in good faith and in accordance with the law. Public and product liability, professional indemnity and group personal accident insurance are provided by the department. Public and product liability insurance covers committee members and individual volunteers against legal liabilities for injury or loss to members of the public and others. Professional indemnity insurance protects committee members from claims of breach of professional duty alleged to have been made in the conduct of the committee's activities. Group personal accident insurance covers volunteers, including committee members, injured while carrying out voluntary activities organised, authorised or under the control of the committee. The committee must maintain records of who volunteered and when and the nature of the activity. The guidelines contain an example of a volunteer attendance registry. Other organisations that use the reserve, such as sporting clubs and community groups, are not covered by this insurance, and the committee is not responsible for the risks involved in these activities. The committee needs to ensure these organisations have their own insurances in place. The department's regional and local offices provide support for managing the reserve. Staff can assist with conservation of flora and fauna, advice on growing trees, native title issues, fire protection, protection of cultural heritage, and many other operational matters. Committees need to consult with the local office when arranging leases, licenses, and contracts. They also need to consult with the department when planning developments on the reserve because these can only take place with the landowner's consent and the department represents the landowner. For more information on all aspects of managing the reserve, from fencing to power lines, go to the Responsibilities and Good Practice Guidelines. Is a volunteer covered by the department's personal injury insurance? Yes, as long as they are undertaking work organised, authorised or under the control of the committee. The committee must maintain a volunteer attendance registry. Finally, thank you for your work on a committee of management. This is an important role and one that is greatly appreciated by your local community and visitors to the Crown Land Reserve. The department appreciates your efforts too. Remember that we can assist you with a range of matters relating to committees of management, so feel free to contact us for assistance or advice. Visit the department's website or call us on 136 186.